third installment, we had uh, Mason Clements and then uh, Wen Ratliff, and then now we have world champion Chad Mayfield. We got the questions coming in, people saying hi, <laughs> hi to you and everything else. Uh, I guess first off, thanks for joining us, Chad. I know how busy you are. I know how crazy your schedule's been. Uh, the first question I'd like to ask, and I'm sure people want to know, is when you go to bed at night, your world champion tie down roper, Shad Mayfield, what's that feel like when you wake up every morning and you've got one gold buckle on your belt? Uh, it's a great feeling, you know. It's something that I've always dreamed of. But uh, going to bed at night, I always dream of wanting another one for sure. Uh, you know, what in the world and having a gold buckle is a feeling like nothing ever before. But uh, I feel like I need to get more under my, on my belt. Sure. And I'd have to, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, obviously you had a huge winner and then it came down to round 10. Things were crazy. How nerve wracking was round 10. And then you end up winning the world by like $231 over Marty Yates. Walk through round 10. You know, all the rounds were tough, really. They were all nerve wracking. Uh, I didn't have nothing together. Didn't rope like I should have, but round 10 was really the defining moment of, of getting a gold buckle and, uh, I knew what I needed to do and what Marty and Shane needed to do at that time, too. Uh, and it came real close. And uh, I just knew that I had to make the best run I could. And I did that. But my kept got up. And really, really, at that moment, I didn't know if I got it won. And, you know, nobody did really at that moment. They didn't know because it was, came down between me, Marty and Shane. And, right. you know, just riding out of that arena, I was kind of down and then came out. And I got I grabbed my phone out of my rope can and. Like, I remember Caleb Driggers was the first text I got. He said, congratulations, world champ. And I kind of was like, well, I don't, I don't know if I got it done. But um, I ended up getting it done by 200, like 230 bucks. So right. it, was, it was a surreal feeling for sure. Right. Well, uh, congratulations on that. I know how crazy it was. And you, you had your success and won the world championship with a huge winner. You're down at San Antonio again. What's it like to be down there? Well, I mean, I know you're in Florida now, but you're going to be in yeah. San Antonio when I run. What's your thoughts about that rodeo? And I've got some questions coming in. I'll ask a couple of those right now. What uh, what motivates you was one of the questions we ask if you want to roll into that. And then uh, what advice would you give young tie-down ropers? Yeah, San Antonio's for sure my favorite rodeo. Uh, the format and everything fits my style and everything. And, uh, kind of, kind of, what motivates me is growing up. You know, I've always looked up to to other ropers and stuff, and always wanted to be like them. So, uh, what motivates me is the younger generation of ropers coming up, like myself. I want to be able to be a great role model for them, to make to be able to make calf rope and everything better. And you know, I've always been just a kid coming up and looking at it all. I used to look up to Trevor Brazil, Cody Hall, Fred Whitman, and that's kind of what motivates me. And also. Being able to win gold buckles, that's kind of the biggest thing that I'm in it for, you know. It's its nothing like winning a gold buckle. It's something. And uh, something I'd want to tell kids coming up, you know, is to never give up. Uh, there's time. Rodeo's, I think, the toughest event for sure of any other sport out there. And, you know, coming up, you want to be able to just focus on one thing and, and get it done. You don't want to – you never want to give up. You never want to get down on yourself. The biggest thing is to stay positive and, and keep working hard. Sure. We had greetings from Argentina and Panama, and we appreciate the worldly outlook on social media platforms like this. Tie down roper, Chad Mayfield. We had another question come about, and I'll get into some other things with you too, Chad. What do you look for in a calf horse? You know, I look, I look forward to trust, really. I like to be able to trust my calf horses. I want to know that they're going to give me 100% every time because uh, in calf rope, it's, a calf horse is 75% of your run, so my horses, for sure, I want to know that they, they, they're they going to work their hardest every time. And uh, for sure, I want to be able to trust them. That's that's great. And uh, I want my horses to just be consistent. I think that, um, I think that's the biggest part is being consistent. You don't want them one time working bad and then coming on working good. I want them to be able to work it good every time. Can you talk about the two horses or the horses you have in your stable that you're using? Yeah, I have two horses with me in the in the trailer right now. One's Jag. He's a 12-year-old horse. He came from Monty Lewis. Uh, a lot of y'all will see me start riding him now. Uh, I got him I got him about 
uh, six months ago, I haven't wrote him a whole lot, but this year I'm, I'm bringing him out pretty hard and starting to, I'm going to ride him at San Antonio uh, next week. And another horse is Rampage. He's a little run horse I got. He's 11 years old and he's just, he, I think he's just, You know, he's just he's just a great look horse out there. I'm gonna be riding him also. And uh I still have Wichita at home. Wichita's the horse I won the American American on and everything. I'm just giving him a little time. Uh probably bring him out some this summer. But I've I have a great lineup of horses right now. Sure. Can you we had some questions that said do they do you think your hands are faster than your dad's? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, in a fire. Yeah, I don't think I have faster hands than my dad. I think my dad had some of the fastest hands and and kept roping. And my hands are more more solid. They're not. I don't know. I've just never been that fast of a tire, or whatever. But uh, I know that I, I haven't really got to watch my dad rope coming up or anything. But I've heard that he had some of the fastest hands and kept roping. And I don't. I, I don't think sure. that my hands were as fast as him. <laughs> I, what What's it like? I mean, I know tie down roping is difficult, but just your athletic ability, how much does that help you in tie-down roping and just in rodeo in general? You know, calf roping, it's it's a real event that you got to have – you got to be athletic to do. and It's just something I've been blessed with. I've always been athletic. Uh, I played sports coming up in junior high and high school and stuff, so uh, I've always been an athlete in sports also. But calf roping, it's, it's something that you really have to be athletic or work out in also and – just uh, I've, I've been blessed also. I've never had to work out, and I've, I've never worked out actually. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm blessed that we're right now. I, I don't have to work out. And it just allows me to be able to flank, flank calves, get off, get down the rope faster. So it's a big thing we can keep up for sure. We had some people asking what the best rope is to use or what rope do you use, I guess. Anybody you want to answer? Uh, I, have a, I have a couple different kind of ropes I use. Um, at rodeos, I use grass ropes. I usually use a Sean Webb grass rope or a Brad Goodrich grass rope. And uh, just to practice with or jackpot with, I use a, a Striper by Rattler or a Viper by Rattler. They're, they're some of the best ropes I like to use. And, uh, Rattler sure, we got strings, people... for sure. We got some people joining from New Mexico. You grew up in Clovis, correct? Getting a little bit of lag here. Can you hear me? Okay, we're getting a little bit of a lag. We're getting uh, shout outs from New Mexico. You grew up in Clovis, correct? Okay. Uh, what, what was the, how was the American life and how much did that change your life when you won all that money last year there in Arlington? Uh, at the um, RFD TV's The American. Looks like we're having a some connectivity issues. I'm gonna. Are you, can you, are you there, Shad? Let me see if I can get this fixed real quick. We had this worked out, and it might be on my end. Uh, bear with me for one minute, and we'll get this fixed. Hey, we're still here.
Okay, we're getting reset back up here. We, if we had some technical difficulties a little bit, probably has to do with the weather, <laughs> like everything going on. In... Hey, there it is. Oh, you're back with us. Sorry, I, I might have been on my end chat. I apologize. We'll join back in here. I, it was just cutting in and out, and I didn't want it to try to fight through it, cutting in and out. So we're back joined by world champion tie down roper Shad Mayfield on PRCA Instagram Takeover. And you mentioned uh, your horses, and you talked about that. And what about Eric? And how much did that uh, won all that money there? And obviously, I mean, what was that experience like? It was a huge experience. It's uh, something I never imagined uh, experiencing in my life. Uh, it's something I want to reimagine for sure. <laughs> but horsepower was great, and uh, you know, I look, really looking forward to it again. Sweet. So, what's what are the differences from competing in Globe Life Field compared to AT and T Stadium, Cowboy Stadium? They're both very big environments. Uh, I've been that was my second time competing in AT and T this year, and it's just so big. The arena and everything is big, and so is Globe Life. Uh, Globe Life, they're both, different. they're both different setups for sure. More than different setup than any other rodeo, and especially Globe Life being set up in the baseball field. And it's just something that's it's cool for people to watch and for sure people to try and compete at. But uh, it was a great experience to be at for sure. We had some questions come across. I pretty Boudreaux, Boudreaux Campbell taking a jab at me to tell me to get things right. Thanks, Boudreaux. <laughs> at least we have people joining in, so I, I accept the criticism. We're just rolling with the punches a little bit here. Um, what uh, – and you talked about the American and things you're doing. We got questions coming across. What, what goes through your mind when you're getting ready to compete? Is there – do you listen to music, like, before you walk up and get ready, or what, what's going through your mind right before you compete? I really just try and focus, uh, block out everything, just try and focus on what I'm doing. Uh, I rope the dummy a lot before I rope or before I go down to the arena to just kind of get my mind on things. Uh, I listen to music also. It's kind of going to get me to focus. But especially before I before I go to the bo in box or something, I take a deep breath, kind of count to 10, um, make sure everything's on my mind, and I go over go over my job in my head, to go over my vision, my run in my head, vision of what I want to have and everything. Uh, but I think the biggest part of it is trying to focus. Uh, what was your high school roping experience is one of the questions we got here, and we've got people joining in from Brazil and Panama and Argentina, and thank you so much. What was your high school? I know you were a national champion in high school, if I remember right, and you were the first guy to qualify for the NFR and win the high school finals rodeo in the same year. What was that like? Uh, it was huge. I've always been a huge junior high high school uh, rodeo guy and you know I've, I've been to nationals every year that I've, I've done it and uh, it's something that I believe all kids should do is go to nationals because it's a feeling like new other that's kind of where I started to come up and especially being at nationals it was the most nervous time of my career but it's good to get get those nerves out and everything and uh, my last year in high school at the high school nationals I was pro rodeo and, and made nationals also and uh, I was back and forth that week when I was in at the high school nationals. Back and forth from Cheyenne to Salinas, just going to rodeos and stuff. While also tr trying to make the NFR. And at that time, I think I was top top 25 in the world. And then after that week, after I won nationals and everything, I, I was top 15 in the world. So it was, it was a cool feeling for sure. We got another question here. Appreciate that, Chad. How, how do you work like changing your speed within runs to stay? consistent like I'm sure obviously Cheyenne and different places have different setups and different runs how do you make sure your runs are what you want them to be to stay con consistent uh yeah that's true a lot of it is based on the, the arena setup and, and calves usually if it's a big big arena with uh with like walking fresh calves you want to kind of take everything a little slower and more solid uh it's kind of my input like especially at Cheyenne they're walking fresh calves so you really just don't want to go out and just try and try and go as fast as you can because the calves ain't ever really been anywhere. If you just come up running up on them, you might, might run them over or something. So you kind of want to ease up and especially time. Just kind of want to take everything smooth. But 
And then if you go to go out to a setup like San Antonio, it's short, short setup, small arena, and calves that have been roped. You want to just try and try and go fast as you can, especially roping against guys like you are. It's going to be a speed event, and uh, uh, different setups for sure. You want to change your speeds up. Is there a favorite place that you like to rope? I know you said San Antonio, and along those same lines, is video on your bucket list that you've yet to win that you want to win? Um, I've never got to go to uh, Calgary Stampede in Canada. Uh, it's a rodeo that I hope they have soon, and it was, it was a rodeo I was looking forward to, go to going to, and uh, I hope they have that and hopefully win it because it count. It also counts towards the PRC standings now. And, uh, my dad's won that rodeo before, and it, it pays good, and it just everyone's told me it's a great rodeo to be at. Sure. We had people asking uh, – who was your biggest rodeo role model or just your biggest role model growing up? Yeah, I've had a lot of role models growing up. Mine would be my dad. He's a he's been a he's a two time NFR qualifier and he's been helping me rope since ever I was coming up and he rodeo with me my first year and kinda of showed me my ropes. But I've also looked up to other other professional cap ropers and stuff like Trevor Brazil and Fred Whitfield, guys like that. Uh, I think role models is something that uh, all kids should have just someone to look up to and, and uh, help make you better for sure. Is there you? Is there a favorite? We got more questions coming here, and we really appreciate it. We've got uh, 2020 High Down Roping World Champion Chad Mayfield joining us for the Instagram takeover here on PRCA. Is there a favorite rodeo that you've roped at that you love outside of the NFR, or a buckle that you cherish outside of the World Championship buckle? You know, uh, I have my. My, probably the American. Uh, it's a buckle that I wear every day until I get my gold buckle. It's a, it's a very meaningful rodeo to me, especially competing at the AT&T Stadium and uh, winning 600,000 there is, is, is a goal that I never thought I'd achieve, but I got it done. So I, I wear that buckle a lot, and, and it's a very memorable rodeo to me. We had some other questions coming about asking about the diversity in rodeo I, I know rodeo is different than a lot of sports we have people from all over the world and different types of people that compete what's your thoughts on just that diversity in rodeo obviously you grew up in it with your dad and he was the first timed event qualifier to african-american cowboy what's your thoughts on just diversity in rodeo in 2020 uh you know i think rodeo is the most positive sport in that area um I know that I fit in well everywhere I've gone really on. And I know it, it used to be different back in my dad's day and, and right. whenever he was coming up and stuff like that. But I think it's it's real positive in the rodeo world and it's it's welcoming to everybody, uh, you know, because anyone can be able to rodeo. And uh, my dad, he was the first African-American at the NFR. And, and then Fred Whitcomb came along and Bud Ford, Corey Solomon. Uh, there's not a there's not a whole lot of African Americans that actually rodeo, but you know it's it's open. I think rodeo is very welcoming to everybody, and that's why I've always felt like a great part to rodeo. Sure, we have people like I said joining in from all over the country. They're asking, what's the best part about New Mexico? Like obviously you grew up there. We've got you. You could do a little tourist thing here for the state of New Mexico. What did you like? What do you like best best about New Mexico, Chad? Uh, New Mexico is a great state. Uh, you know, we have we have a lot of great things in New Mexico, and one of the best things you ought to try is probably the green chili out of New Mexico, and, and they got some good food out there, and, you know, New Mexico is where I was born and raised, so it's always been a part, a part of my uh, my coming up, and they've just always been so welcoming to me, so I really appreciate them. Sure, sure. And they have people saying, yeah, giving you the thumbs up for the chili. I, I know I spoke to you about this last year. Uh, what, where, is it, where do you stand with the team roping and steer roping? The reason I ask, obviously, last year you could have been in the all-around mix. You're young. You're a world champion. What's your stance on uh, where you're at with steer roping and team roping right now? Uh, I think Stetson Wright spoiled that for me. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I team roped a little bit last year thinking it was going to be an easy race for the all-around. And – <laughs> and Stetson Wright came into the NFR and just dominated. So uh, I was kind of upset. I was like, wow, what a waste of my time that year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I might get into steer tripping one 
get here pretty quick, start learning the trip, and and uh, maybe maybe get a little better at my team rope in one day, be a competitor in the all around. But I think uh, Stetson Ryan's got that tied down for a while now. I, I understand. I mean, I got another question here. What what's your favorite rough stock event to watch, or just other event outside of tie down roping when you're at rodeos to watch? Uh, I like watching bull riding. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of great bull riders I like to watch, and uh, that that interests me a lot. And I don't know if any of them are watching, but I uh, I think I ride I could be able to ride bulls someday if I if I wanted to. <laughs> but uh, oh, you, you know, good. yeah, yeah. I I I grew up riding bulls like in in junior high and before that, and then I and then I got stepped on. Mm. Kind of chickened out, decided to quit, but that was always my main goal coming up was riding bulls and then decided to rope. But uh, I like to watch bull riding for sure outside of outside of time to do it. Sure, we have a question here, and you may know I, the person who says you still have your red bike. So I'm assuming <laughs> someone who grew up with you. I do. I do. I keep a I keep a bike with me at all times, uh, and my favorite color is red, so I keep a bike with me. I feel like it's good exercise, and I hate I hate walking. And, and at rodeos, it's a it's a good thing to have is having a bike. And I guess and my my buddy JD he saw me at the American, and I had my string on and they, my rope can. I just if anyone's been at the American, they know how far long the walking is from the trailers down to the AT and T stadium. So I I just rode my bike all all around that place. I got you. They got another question about Clovis, and we appreciate all the questions coming across. What is your favorite restaurant in Clovis? Uh, my favorite restaurant is the Owl Mexican restaurant. Uh, every time I come home, that's the place I go to. Or every time before I leave, I stop at that place. And I've, I've ate there since I was a little kid, and it's, it's my favorite place. And we had we have some more questions kind of along these lines, and I know you answered them early. These these questions are more along the lines of guys growing up that want to make it big like you. Can you just to kind of explain the grind or how hard it is to work to get to the level that you're at? Kind of knows what they're doing to be there and, and kind of help you come along. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a matter of how hard you want it and how, and how bad you want to work at it. Who's the most uh, famous person you've met outside of rodeo? Uh, I've met, I've got to meet some athletes um, and also music producers. Uh, I know Taylor Hearn, a baseball player, uh, James Washington, he's played. Mm -hmm. Jazz Prince, he's a music producer that's that's uh, kind of big in, in the music industry and also starting to rope. So um, I've got to meet a lot of a lot of people outside of media that are kind of big people, and uh, it's kind of it's kind of amazing how they actually know about rodeo and kind of rodeo is something that interests them. So uh, you know, rodeo I think is starting to be bigger than everyone thinks it's going to be. We had another question come across. Um, what type of music do you listen to maybe to hype you up or just to amp you up before rodeos? Or do you listen to any type of music? I do. Uh, music's a big thing that I listen to all the time, especially when I'm driving. Uh, I listen to kind of all kinds of music, country uh, and, and hip hop and rap. And uh, I listen to a lot of hip hop and rap whenever it kind of pumps me up before I rope and everything. And, on long drives, I'll listen to the country or, or something like that. But, uh, you know, hip-hop and rap's kind of what I listen to before I wrote, kind of pumps me up and gets my dream going. When, when you rodeo and you kind of, you were touching on this, does it seem weird that, or not weird, that guys that, like, famous players or football players, like you mentioned, Taylor Hearn, who would put pitches for the Rangers, that these people know you, that, like, does it seem, does it, do you ever get like, wow, this is kind of crazy? I mean, you're 20 years old. Yeah, it's crazy for sure. Like Taylor, I guess, 
he's known me for a while and I didn't even know it. And uh, a lot of these guys I meet through social media, like James Washington, he plays for the Steelers. And right. one day, you know, we just came across each other and he kind of knew me and I was like, I, it just kind of surprised me. Uh, Cause I mean, athletes, you don't think they just like pay attention to rodeo, but they really do. And it's just a, it's just a big thing for us rodeo people. But those athletes and, and people are like that are kind of watching us also. We had some people saying you were great on TikTok. Maybe they were talking about one tough <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> well, I, I besides that, I, I do be on TikTok a lot. Y'all can follow me. Uh, sometimes I get bored and post some exciting dance moves or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> sure, sure. What's your favorite sport? Or like, if you're not doing rodeo and obviously you're great at it, is there a sport you like to sit down and uh, watch on TV or just watch or stream or anything like that? Uh, I watch a lot of football and basketball uh, when I'm hanging out or something. But uh, a lot of times whenever I'm at rodeos and have some downtime, uh, I like to go to the court and play some basketball with some friends or something. Uh, it's, it's a fun thing to do. It keeps us in shape, and this is something I've always enjoyed doing. So who's your game most similar to in basketball? <laughs> I don't know. I want to compare myself to the best, of course, LeBron James. <laughs> Nice. Not Michael Jordan? Yeah, it's a different era. We have people ask, what, who's your favorite uh, basketball team? Do you have a favorite team? I do. Uh, Golden State Warriors and Stephen Curry. Uh, they're my favorite team for sure. Yeah, you need to cross paths with him. He needs to learn how to rope out like you do and you like he does. That, that'd be nice if we could get Steph Curry. And... <laughs> we got another question here. We got this going on, Instagram takeover with PRCA. We got a few more minutes with Shad Mayfield. We appreciate everybody joining in. Uh, we're... We have people asking, what's your favorite place to visit, like when you're not rodeo, and there's a place, is there a place you've been that you really enjoyed? Um, I'm actually in Florida right now. Uh, we got here on Sunday, and it's my first time in Florida, and it's, and we got some, a couple of rodeos down here, and I'll be down here quite a bit for some rodeos, but for sure, as a, as a for two years I've rodeoed, being in Florida has been the most fun time I've ever had. Uh, it's warm, for sure, and get to go down the beach, and got a jet ski the other day and do some hunting so uh it's been one of the, my favorite places to come to sweet sweet we got another question what what type of cowboy hats do you wear and how long have you been wearing them like that that maybe a certain brand uh, i wear american hat company for sure they're the best and uh you know i i like all colors pretty much but i mostly wear midnight blue that's my color of the strong felt hat by american hat company that i wear and I've been wearing American since I was since I was little, and that's the only hat I've always worn. And uh, I think they're the best, so you should get you one. You're uh, you've qualified for the Ram National Circuit Finals, right? So you'll be back down in Kissimmee in an April. Yeah. That... Yes, yeah, so I'll be back down here uh, in April also, and again also in March at some videos too. What? How, how important is that for you? I mean, obviously you got San Antonio, the American. But the RNCFR counts again for the world standings. How much are you looking forward to that? Uh, it's huge, uh, especially the money counts this year and with all the radio cancellations. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for us contestants to be able to go to and compete at for compete for a big chance at big money and uh, other opportunities there as well. So are you, what's next for you? Are you in Florida and then back to San Antonio? And, and, and you kind of lucked out. You mentioned the weather. San Antonio's yeah. not getting the best of the weather. You kind of got away from that. <laughs> yeah, um, I left the day before all the all the weather hit bad around there and got down to the nice weather. But uh, I'm up at Kissimmee in the morning at a rodeo down here in Perry, Georgia, tomorrow night, and Dade City, Florida on Friday. And then uh, I'll head back for San Antonio. I'm up at San Antonio on the 23rd and 24th, that Tuesday and Wednesday. So looking forward to them to going to those rodeos. Do you? I know you're still super young in your rodeo career, uh, and you you've experienced like two like two crazy elements of rodeo. Your rookie year, 
you had to fight tooth and nail to make the finals and the like basically like the last weekend and then you won a world championship down to the last round last guys going out can you explain those emotions on both sides of that um being on the bubble is the most nerve-wracking thing you could ever be on uh you know for a while i was went from 14th from actually 13th to 16th there the last couple of weeks of the of the um, season my rookie year and you know I had, a, I had a great last week. I placed it like six out of seven rodeos I went to to end up 13th going into my first NFR. But uh, it was tough for me and to do that. You know, no one wants to end up 16th. I feel like that'd be the worst feeling in the world. So I pushed through that. And then my second year, I can't, had a lead pretty much all year and had a great lead actually going into the finals and everything being first. But uh, I set a goal that. I want to stay top ten, top five actually throughout the whole PRCA season. That's what that way you don't have to put no pressure on yourself at the end, being on the bubble or something. I feel like if you stay top five, then that means you're doing good all season long. Yeah, you're definitely right with that. You calm the nerves so you don't have to sweat out the bullets of being in the top fifteen and finishing sixteenth. We had another question come across: Have Have you ever had a horse buck on you? maybe growing up or just in competition? And, and if so, how did you react to that? Oh, yeah, I've been, I've been bucked off a lot of times. Uh, my dad, he's, he's been a horse trader for years. So uh, coming up, I've always run different kinds of horses and everything. And I've been, I've been bucked off and literally about everything you can think of with horses. But um, that's just going to make you a better hand with horses for sure. And we got some more team roping questions. I know you said you kind of experimented with the team rope last year, and then that's and right kind of set the bar a little higher, getting to the NFR and win another all around. Do you have any favorite team ropers or guys you've watched? Uh, maybe just obviously you've tried this. Is there anybody out there that you've watched uh, that you want to be like outside? I mean, Trevor. Uh, Trevor kind of speaks for himself, but anybody else out there? Yeah, I, wa I watched a lot of team ropers for sure compete. Um, Junior, I really like Watson Junior and Joseph Harrison and uh, Caleb Driggers. I think they're some of the best guys to watch, and uh, especially last year, whenever I got to compete against them, I got to see how tough they were, and got to actually kind of uh, experience team roping against those guys. So I, I really like watching those guys rope, and you know, team roping so tough. I mean, you can't imagine. You don't know how fast those guys make it look and everything until you actually do it. So I got a lot of respect for team ropers. Sure. We had a question here. What rough stock rider would you most want to travel with? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel like rough stock riders are wild. <laughs> I like to kind of, I like to start, kind of stay calm, and I think rough stock riders are wild. But uh, put me in with Stetson Ride. I think we'd have a good time. Nice. Do you, I, I know guys are different. Some guys travel all the time. Some guys don't travel with guys as much. Do you ha Have you had any traveling partners or – How's that arrangement work for you? Uh, I have. Uh, last year, I already had with John Dowd in with me a little bit. Uh, he mm -hmm. had hurt his knee at the first of the season, but uh, towards the end of it, he already had with me. And right now, I'm roping with a couple. I'm uh, already in with a couple of rookies, Quade Hyatt and Neil Dove. He's already in a little bit, though. But uh, Quade Hyatt, we call him rookie out here. Uh, he acts like a rookie, but he's coming up for sure. <laughs> he's, and he's going to be rodeo with me. He's listening to this right now, but he's going to be <laughs> with me all year long, but he for sure acts like a rookie. I got you. Uh, we had some other things coming across, and I, maybe you have done this. Have you ever thought about putting on a roping school? I mean, if you put on the school, it would say 2020 tie-down roping world champion Chad Mayfield's roping clinic. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm planning on putting schools on, uh, but – I'm, waiting, I'm kind of waiting to get my own place. Uh, I'm about to start building a place by Stephenville, Texas, and uh, I'm going to start having roping schools and everything, putting them on. But I think here pretty soon, within the next couple of months, I'm going to have a roping school and, and advertise it for sure. Uh, it'll be breakaway and tight end. Oh. So you might be uh, – house Stephenville, you said we were kind of losing the connection. But you want to go – I mean, that's cowboy country, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, out there around – Stuff. Yeah, Stephenville, Texas. That's that's where I kind of want to be. By uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of ropers by Stephenville. A lot of locals to go to, and I feel like uh, it's centrally located to do to do roping and everything. And 
uh, that's where I think I'm going to have my place set up. Within the next couple of months, I think I'm going to go out. I don't know where, but I'll have a rope school or start doing it for sure. Sure. We had a few other questions. I'll get back to one real quick. And we got a few minutes here with a few minutes left here with the uh, world champion tie down roper Shad Mayfield. Uh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I mean, as crazy as this seems, I mean, everybody thinks that you winning world titles was, I wouldn't say a given, but even Shane Hanch, you told me your rookie year, like, you better watch out for Shad Mayfield. This guy's coming. And, and that was kind of my introduction to what, I mean, when guys like that are telling me things and you've won this and you've done, been to two NFRs, where do you see yourself in 10 years or where do you hope to be in 10 years in terms of accomplishments? Uh, in 10 years, I hope to I still be, still be rodeoing, but I want to have as many gold buckets as I get in 10 years. Uh, that's kind of my goal is to have, to be a world champion, not one, but multiple times. And in 10 years, you know, I'll just be 30 years old, so I feel like I'm kind of, I'll kind of still be in my prime of really on. So uh, I can see myself still going hard at it and still hopefully have, have more good buckles on my belt. Well, in 10 years, you'll be like Tough Cooper. He just turned 30. <laughs> yeah, he's old. <laughs> he's old? <laughs> yeah, he's old. Yeah, I got you. Well, we really appreciate you for joining us, Chad. I know it's been crazy. Last week we tried to hook up and you got caught in some craziness with uh, Jackson and the weather and everything else, but you joined us now. I really appreciate it. Uh, everybody's sticking with us. It, it's been a great experience us doing these Instagram takeovers. Is there anything that you'd like to let people know before we go offline here live? I mean, obviously you've got a lot of followers or any things you want to let people know but the, where they can see more of what you're doing, anything like that? Yeah, uh, y'all can just follow my Instagram. I'm usually pretty much an open book on there. It messes me. I'll, I'll try and get back with y'all on where I'm going and coming here soon within the next month or two. And, uh, you know, po I post a lot of what I'm doing on my Instagram, so check it out. Well, we appreciate you for joining us here, Shad. I know it's crazy. I, looks like you're driving in your truck, but we we heard you had Wi-Fi in your truck, so you probably <laughs> – that's yeah. what – that, that must have you happen when you win a world championship, right? They, they yeah, wi yeah, Wi-Fi in your truck helps, especially when you're going rodeoing all the time. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Well, we appreciate it, Shad. Be, be safe. Good luck in your upcoming rodeos. Good luck in uh, Kissimmee. Good luck in San Antonio. And we'll, we'll cross paths with you hopefully soon in these rodeos. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for everybody sending the questions. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign up.